algorithm. A difficult word, but one you hear often. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step instruction for completing a task. For example, a recipe is an algorithm. If your task is to bake a cake and you follow the recipe, the outcome will most likely be cake and not, say, carrot soup. The same task can be done by several different algorithms. So you often hear discussion on which algorithm is best. So in games, algorithms can control, for example, how fast a vehicle can go, or what happens to the parts of the vehicle when it crashes. So an algorithm takes into account the situation when starting, other information, and based on the idea the coder had, calculates an output. That is, what happens to the vehicle. So an algorithm is a coder's way to try and make the computer think. <laughs> or at least act in a logical way. Let's take a look at how game levels are designed. A level is like an arena where the player gets challenges to solve. It's the part of the game the player interacts with most of the time. And most games have a lot of levels to solve. So what are we looking for when designing a level? Well, the player should understand what needs to be done when the level starts and know where the goal is. At the same time, there should be surprises. Building a level is like setting the stage or construction of a building. It all starts with the blueprints. The player should have options, different ways to solve the puzzle, to try to beat the level. The player should feel they can always improve and master the game. It's important that the levels give players enough challenge to become harder as the player improves and that there is variation in the levels. A level has to be both challenging and rewarding at the same time. So we need a good mix of difficulty and places where the player experiences a success. And of course, there needs to be an ending, a victory. <sighs> Today, we're taking a look at looping. Sometimes, actually, quite often, something happens in a game repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. However, we don't want to write the same code over and over again. That's where loops come in handy. do is instruct the computer to carry out a piece of code until something happens. In this case, piggies will be added to the track. They'll loop around and 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 around until there are six piggies on the track. But then they will crash. So, it's important that you give the computer a condition, or else the piggies will get caught in an infinite loop. That means that they'll race around the track forever, and we wouldn't want that to happen. Instead of piggies crashing, the computers will crash. Uh -huh. So functions are like tasks to computer. You can think of functions like the tasks that your parents give you such as cleaning your room, or doing your homework, or taking out the trash. But in programming, you get to be the boss and tell the computers which tasks to do. 
To do so, you'll have to create functions. For instance, you can create a function for jumping, and when you call it, the piggies will jump. When programming games, you can plan ahead for all kinds of basic things that needs to be done, like updating the score, or ending the level, or starting the music. So by thinking ahead, functions is like a set of dominoes. Each piece has its role, and you can build all kinds of combinations from them. Or call them, which is a term that we use in coding. And if you're smart enough, every block has its place, and the result is like you want it. <laughs> or not. Coolest job in the world. Being a king? No. Being a soccer player? Nope. Being a game tester? Oh, yes. When a game is being coded, not all pieces fit together right away. And when something doesn't work, we call it a bug. And finding those bugs is the job of a tester. The bug can be just small nuances, like the wrong color somewhere, or major problems, like that you get stuck in a wall if you press a button at the wrong time. So it's really important that the testers chase after bugs and report them in the bug list for the coders to fix, so we get the next games to you in mint condition. Testing game is not just fun, you have to keep all the bugs in order. Maybe someone else already found the bug. Or maybe the bug is already fixed. Game testing also needs a lot of repetition. Maybe you need to run into the same wall a hundred times to find a special bug. But really, is it that bad to play a game a hundred times or more? I don't think so. So how do you put it all together in order to create an amazing game? We have discussed many things, from algorithms to sound design, and from storytelling to conditionals. But what games and coding is all about is fun. We test the game on real players that haven't played the game before. It's important to listen to feedback to tweak and balance the game to perfection. We want the game to look, sound, and feel good to play. So we must spend a lot of time on polishing the game so it really shines and you feel happy to be in the game. But in the heart of it, we need to know how to give the computer its orders to create code. And it takes clever problem solving, maths, and an open mind. So it all comes down to passion, a shared vision where everyone involved wants to build the same game. And there is a role in development for all kinds of people. Maybe sometime in the future, for you as well. <laughs>